as you can see, I am not Pastor Randy today. <laughs> but I have the opportunity to come and bring the word this morning. Okay, so I'm very excited about that. So let's go ahead and pray for this uh, next few moments. Father, Lord, we ask you please to just be with us in these next few moments that you remove any and all distractions, that we focus on your word, that we may be engulfed in what you're trying to tell us, that your wisdom is bestowed upon our mind and just kept in our heart, that you continue to change us and mold us into the person you've called us out to be. And may we just continue to give you honor and glory in all the things that we do. And in your King, in your mighty name, King Jesus, and all those in agreement say, Amen. 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 All right, so imagine, imagine a complex, well-designed, well-engineered machine that can adapt, learn quickly, and store information for years, and bring it back to the surface instantly. It can create, design, solve problems where certain parts of the machine can function by direction while all the other parts function automatically. A machine that has more working parts than there are people who work for major companies like Google and Amazon. It can send med messages to these organizations, to these moving parts, at the speed of 200 miles per hour. That can change matter into energy so that it runs efficient. A machine that never really turns off and can have up to 75 to 100 year warranty. What can be such a creation? What can function in such a manner? No, it's not the new iPhone 20 coming out. Besides, Android will get there before iPhone does. <laughs> Just letting it be known. Okay? And no, no, it's not the newest self-driving car or even AI. The psalmist said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Go ahead and open up your Bibles to Psalms cha uh, verse, uh, chapter 139, verse 13 and 14. Psalms chapter 139, verses 13 and 14. I'll give you a few moments to open up there. Wonderful. Psalms 139, 13 and 14. For you formed me, my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. David knew this thousands of years before modern medicine, before scientists, before biologists, before doctors really discovered the wonders and complexity that is the human body. There are still things that the medical field cannot understand or explain regarding how the body functions. In Psalms 139.14, the psalmist David is praising God because he is overwhelmed by the majesty of a God who could create him in such an intricate and such a unique way. How wonderful is the body. It may sound ever so self-absorbed, but it's actually not at all. It's like David is saying, Lord, how great is your work, except your work is me. Therefore, how great am I? However, I am, catch this, I am only great because it is the greatness of God that makes me great. I am only great because it is the greatness of God that makes me great. The same way, I am only wonderful because of God's wonderfulness that makes me wonderful. I'm only wonderful because of the creator, the one who created me. That's the reason why I'm wonderful. So when God says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, he's not saying that God is, was scared to make me. No, not at all. That word doesn't mean that. What he means is God made you. He made you full of respect, reverence, honor, and awe. It's because God is worthy of respect. 
that we are respectfully made. It's because God is worthy of reverence that we are made in reverence. It's because God is worthy of honor that we are made in honor. It is because God, we stand in awe of God that we are an awe-inspiring creation. Everything that we are first comes from the source of everything that he is. We are made in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us, man, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. He created them male and female. You are unique. You are unique, uniquely made. And no one else is going to be like you. Your DNA is the code only found in you. Nowhere else. You are the only one who has that DNA code. No one before you and no one after you. No one will be the same. And we all know this. The thumbprint, right? That tells us a DNA. Also your teeth. Sometimes in a crime scene, they'll look at the remains. What's left? The teeth. That can be identified at this person. And there's another thing here too. Your tongue has a specific identification print on it. I think sooner or later, for security purposes, the phones are going to start requiring your tongue to unlock, you know, your phone. So probably in 30 years, we're going to see people walking around licking their phone because of the identification and security purposes. You are uniquely made. We are uniquely made because our God is so good. You are even more impressive than the stars in heaven. And they are impressive, those stars in heaven. I have a video showing up here in a few moments that when we were created, that moment of conception, right? The cells from your father and your mother just created this huge explosion all of a sudden, automatically, without another thought, and just started to develop you. How amazing our God is. And check out this video regarding the stars in the sky. To gain perspective. It makes you feel small. <laughs> I am not the center of the universe. <laughs> okay. It makes you feel, whoa, that's out there? Whoa, that power is out, whoa. The creativity of our Lord. So in these past years, hundreds and thousands of years ago, discover the human body that contains, our body contains, 
30 trillion cells. One trillion bone cells, two trillion uh, skin cells, 25 to 35 billion fat cells. Some people got more, some people got less. <laughs> There's about two billion cells that form our brain, brain cells. Again, some people got more, some people got less. Let's just talk about the brain real quick, okay? The brain is this supercomputer. Whoa! The fascination with the... It is a supercomputer. For the sake of argument, let's say a modern laptop or computer. The modern or very good computer will have one terabyte of storage. That's really high. Your cell phone usually has 65 megabytes. That's very small. So... One terabyte of storage, a really good laptop, computer. Your brain, our brain, holds over a 1,000 terabytes of storage, according to Stanford University. And the brain's primary source, I have to say it. Remember, I'm just the messenger, all right? <laughs> the brain's primary source of fuel to, fu to fu fuel this supercomputer is... Carbs. <laughs> carbohydrates. The carbohydrates break down into sugar and form a called glucose. Your brain uses glucose as a main source of energy. That is why low-carb diets may not be the best for your brain. So that idea of low carbs, I think, comes from the devil. Because <laughs> he doesn't want us to think, all right? This blew my mind, too. I said, okay, so the carbs are the main source for your, for your brain to function well. Good carbs, right? Don't go eat McDonald's. That's bad. Okay. Let's talk about the liver here. The liver contains 300 billion specialized cells. The liver can regenerate itself as long as it lasts 25% of the healthy liver remains. It can become whole again. The body can do that by itself. Ooh, let's talk about, let's continue talking about this liver here. During pregnancy, the liver increases in size and weight to accommodate the changing metabolic demands and hormonal balance of the mother, all by itself, all by itself, automatic. I'm pretty sure you moms weren't talking to your liver, hey, you know, there's a baby in there and we need you to grow. Like, dude, we didn't know. God designed that, like, at the precise time, your body will start doing these things, and you don't have to worry about it, because I designed you, because God designed your body to function and survive and be strong. The remarkable hard-working organ and gland is responsible for a host of essential bodily functions, comprising critical roles in digestion, nutrition, absorption, complex metabolic functions, okay? It is your filtration system, your Liver is the filtration system. Let's talk about your heart real quick. The heart beats about 100,000 times per day. 100,000 times per day. During the average person's lifetime, their heart beats more than 2. billion times. 2.6 billion times average lifetime. Each minute, your heart pumps 1.5 gallons of blood. That's a pump flow rate that could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in less than a year. If anyone is to get a champion award for hard working, it's your heart. Your heart is always working. Thank goodness it doesn't take a rest. It's always working. Your heart weighs about 7 to 15 ounces. Your heart works as a coordinated machine. The right side pumps used blood out from the body into the lungs where it refills the oxygen. The left side of your heart then pumps reoxygenated blood back into your body. Amazing. Almost every cell in your body gets blood from your heart. The outer, the outer layers can be found even in your eyes. Your heart pumps blood through about 60,000 miles of blood vessels. 60,000 miles of blood vessels. And this is just one person. 60,000 blood vessels. To put that in perspective, the blood tubing system could circle the earth at the equator twice. 
That is in you. Don't tell me we're not designed intellectually. This is not by randomness. As a machine, the human body is the pinnacle of God's work formed on the sixth and last day of creation, after which God declared it is very good. I'm going to just keep, we have some good facts here. I'm going to keep sharing about the body and just how awesome it is. The body's billions of parts all work together as a team. In 206 bones, the framework, it's over 600 muscles enable it to move with incredible split-second timing. Its skill to balance is such that we can perform awesome feats and, of course, being aerobatic, acrobatic, and yet have such strength that it impresses many. Our body is controlled and coordinated by over 6 billion neurons and 120 trillion connection boxes packed together into an unfathomable, complex set of neural passageways. Basically saying, the system is much like a modern nation. Your body is much like a modern nation. Interconnected by billions of telephone wires, all of this in the brain and spinal column that weighs slightly over 3 pounds. Yeah, it's so impressive what is in us, the creation of the body. The skin alone has about 4 million structures which are sensitive to pain. In addition, it has about one half million sensitive to the touch and 200,000 pounds to the temperature. Your body, if you think about it, your body is the greatest security system. Your skin is the greatest security system ever. No military can even fathom it. You know without seeing if someone pokes you in the back and you know where they poked you in the back. You know the size of that indentation all within seconds. Imagine your home, you, someone steps on your property and you get an alert. Someone is at this part of your house and they weigh about this much and, you know, you better go check. Look how sensitive our skin is that God has created. How sensitive. We are just a modern, modern nation here. Some people say that all of this just happened. That it's random. That it's by evolution or natural selection. Yet, the more we learn about the body, the more we realize that there is much more yet to be discovered. One could spend a lifetime studying a single organ or organ system, and people do. Thus, we have cardiologists, we have hematologists, we have urologists, we have protologists, we have gynecologists, we have neurologists. All these people who specialize in these certain parts of your body because there's so much more in there than we can even realize. Psalms 119.73. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. This is a quote by Charles Spurgeon. The psalmist, regarding to David, right? The psalmist had sacredly peered within the veil which hides the nerves and the blood vessels from common inspection. The science of anatomy was quite unknown to him, and yet he had seen enough to arouse his admiration of the work and the reverence for the worker. David already knew I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't have no science backing. He didn't have a doctor telling them. He didn't have an anatomy book. He just knew, and because how great our God is, he knew I was not just created by mistake. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, did you know an adult body contains 75,000 miles of blood vessels, 60 billion body cells. During a 120-day lifespan, each blood cell makes about 75,000 round trips from the heart to the parts of the body. The total distance is unfathomable, over a million miles traveled within your body. Awesome. It's awesome. We are God's masterpiece. 
We are God's masterpiece. We have eyes that can distinguish approximately 8 million colors. We have ears consisting of 20,000 hairs discerning 300,000 tones. We have a circulatory system that is 60 to 100 miles long. Our heart pumps five quarts of blood per minute, which can equal over 2,000 gallons per day. We produce one billion red blood cells every day. We develop 200 miles of capillaries for every one pound of body fat. We have a muscular system consisting of 10 million nerves. It goes on. It goes on and on and on. We could be here for days just talking about what is exactly in our body. Amen? Amen. Powerful. How can you say this is by accident? How can one say we appeared from nothing, that we're just random and just placed here? How can you have order with that sort of belief system? Imagine you're a pilot. Imagine you're a pilot, and you're flying over an island, and there's some rocks over there. And you see on the beach rocks spelled out H-E-L-P, help. H-E-L-P. You're flying, and you turn over to your co-pilot and say, hey, look, somebody spelled out help. I think someone's down there, and they need some help. And your co-pilot says, no, that's the water just threw the rocks together. <laughs> just like over there, it's just by random. Nobody's down there. They don't need help. It's just random. And you see how we laugh at that just simple words. How could that be possible? No way the word help can just be by mistake. There is no way somebody with some intellect and some second grade learning, okay, was able to spell the word help. Modern atheism and the conflict between faith and science reached this huge clash with the publication of Charles Darwin on the origin of species, written in 1859. Darwin argued that although species and their parts look like they have an intelligent design, this is just an illusion. What? How can you say this is just an illusion? How can you say that? My phone, your phone, didn't just come into existence. Someone had to think about it, someone had to design it, and then someone had to build it. This sermon, the sermon, my notes that I wrote, okay, it didn't just appear on paper. I didn't just close my eyes and randomly start typing away and then open my laptop like, whoa, look at that. Cool. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. That's not what happened. I put some thought in it. I put my mind in it. I put some patience in it. I put some research in it. Our eyes. Check our eyes. Who here has eyes? Everybody got eyes. Perfect. Your eyes, an amazing organ with about two million working parts. They turn light and images into electric impulses that our brain can understand. Anyone wear contacts? Contacts. Don't be shy. I, I do. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah, contacts, right? Contacts? Hey, yes, contacts. I think contacts are one of the greatest inventions ever. I really think so. How is it this soft, gooey substance that you poke in your eye? <laughs> this is how you know some people wear contacts. They go like this. Okay. Then can translate images or light that your brain can automatically receive and turn and change and make it understandable. How is that possible? That didn't just happen. Somebody with, intellig with some smarts put that contact together. It wasn't just found in a cup of water. So if we can believe that, you can believe that? How can you not believe that there's a creator? That this body is not by surprise, I'm here. No that somebody put some thought into making you, making you uniquely, making you special, just knowing the ins and out of who you truly are. 
Language. Oh, let's get into language. Man, how interesting it is that there's thousands and thousands of words just in the English language. How much more the Spanish, all the other languages, and yet our brain can process and learn and understand and speak all those different languages. Intelligent design. Why would someone want to take this position, the position of it just happening? Why would someone want to take this position and try to sell it as science? Makes no sense on how a complex design could come from randomness. Because people, this is why, because some of these people would rather believe in anything else that is not pointing to God. Some of these people would rather believe in anything else that is not pointing to God. What an irrational belief system. Irrational belief system. Not logical at all. That one could have an intricate and beautiful machine without wisdom or intelligence. Smart car. That's one of the craziest new inventions now in modern time. A smart car. I have a client. She has a, a Tesla. And she tells me, oh, yeah, it's going into self-auto driving mode, automatic driving mode. Uh, that's scary. Like, I don't even trust you driving, okay? Now, <laughs> it's now someone else, the car's going to drive itself. But that's like the age we're moving into. But someone had to make that, design it. It didn't just happen by mistake or by randomness. There was thought put behind it. If this is the case then, okay, if we are just by random, if this is the case, then where do morals come from? Where does right and wrong come from? Why have rules? Why have order? Who says I can't go rob a bank? If we're just random, then why can I not choose and act in a random way? Commit any crime? One might say, well, because it's wrong. Well, why is it wrong? Because it's not right. Well, why is it not right? Well, because it's wrong. Okay. Says who? Says me. Well, who are you? <laughs> I don't know who you are. <laughs> this is why there's no way. This is what tells you right and wrong, good and bad, light and dark. Right here. How we have formed society right here. That's why that model of just things happening is irrational, illogical. It does not make sense. When you were born, billions of cells from your parents came together to begin the process of forming you. Each thing during that, those stages are just so wonderful. I was looking it up the other day, and I just, just stumbled on one thing, the eyelids. Your eyelids, how first they're shut, and then in a few weeks, they start to open. How is it that they're opened and cut at the same size. Like that blew my mind. My eyelids, like a surgeon, was cut precisely to open at the same size. Wow. Wow. Just that little detail really blew my mind. Who could have thought of that? Who could have done this? Someone with very intelligent, someone who created the heavens and the earth, someone who knows me in and out. If you guys were blown away with the stars, I was. I was blown away when I first saw that video. And then I look up the body, man, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully, wonderfully made. Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. God knew you. God knows you before you were born. Our value and worth are not determined by our physical appearance, our abilities, or what others think of us. Our value and worth are determined by the one who created us. When God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, he's not just talking about how you view others. He's talking about how you should view yourself. The enemy is very good at tearing you down. The enemy is very good at tearing you down. 
The world is very good at tearing you down, and you yourself are very good at tearing yourself down. However, this is wrong thinking. It's criticism, actually. So when we say we're worthless, not good, or insignificant, we're not only criticizing ourselves, but we are also criticizing the God who made us. When you call yourself worthless, you are saying, you, God, creator, you made me worthless. Think about that. When you criticize yourself, you're also criticizing God who made you. But God does not make mistakes. But God does not make mistakes. I want you to say that real quick. I am not a mistake. I'm going to say it again. I am not a mistake. That's right. God does not make mistakes. One day you'll see this. You'll see it on your very own eyes, how valuable you are to God, if you haven't seen it yet. You're not worthless. You are priceless. You're not worthless. You are priceless. Our bodies move, heal, perceive, see, smell, taste, touch, reproduce, bring pleasure, and even function without our expression, direction, while we sleep. We still haven't fully explored all the possibilities of our incredible brains. And our body houses our spirit, our soul, with creative, loving, sacrificing, worshiping, noble capacities that continue to amaze us. God, the Father, he's a designer, a creator, an engineer, a mathematician, an artist, a mechanic, a biologist, a teacher, all rolled into an eternal and ever-present, everlasting Father. We, in our own existence, testify to his greatness. Every individual has a DNA code so unique, we can be identified by it and connected with it in relations through it. God's word from Genesis to Revelation is a replete with stories of people so different from each other and yet still seen, loved, and known by God. Even as we come to Christ and are being made like him and built into the church, we don't lose our individuality or distinction from one another. We simply learn to function in unity as one in Christ. Wonderfully made indeed. We are the body. Think about it. The human body. How each organ has its specific purpose, tool, and function. Just how we, the body, we each bring something specific and unique to the body. I cannot have my heart work as a lung. It won't work. It's not going to work. I can't have my kidneys put in my brain. It's not going to work. Each organ has been placed there precisely, uniquely, specifically to do its job intended. Just like us. We all have been called to something specific, unique, that we will be able to continue to honor the Lord with the gifts that he's already given us. Amen? Amen. According, according to Acts 17, 26, he determined the optimal time and place for you to be alive in. This word of his creation. And he placed you where here with a purpose already prepared according to. Ephesians 2.10 now. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You are not hidden. It's easy to feel lost in a crowd. It's easy to feel left behind, small, insignificant. David clearly felt this way at times. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? What is man that you are mindful of him? It's natural natural for us to feel this at some moments in our lives, but hard times, abuse, disease, depression, and disaster can amplify this sense for many of us. We can be tempted to despair 
or we can believe and trust in the king. That is when we can turn to Psalms 139. This psalm reminds us that we are not hidden from our loving creator. We can trust that his eye has been on us from the beginning and that he determined our purpose. There's no place we can go, no situation that develops, no pit of sin, no deep that our God cannot find us to be present with us and lead us into his light. There's nowhere you can run. And that's a good thing. It's a great thing. There's nowhere you can run where God is going to leave you or where God can't find you. We are his creation, his masterpiece, and as such, we are called to live in a way that reflects his design and purpose. We are his creation, his masterpiece, and as such, we are called to live in a way that reflects his purpose and design. So take care. Take care of the body that you've been given and the temple you've been given. Take care. Take care of it. Give it all to God. You're feeling stress? Give it to God. You're feeling angry? Give it to God. You're feeling unhealthy? Ask the Lord, I need your help. How can I strengthen this body again? Take care of your body. Take care of your body. Because it is not something that was just thought of. It was special, it was unique, and it's just yours. That's yours. It's, your, it's yours. It is yours from the Father. Take care of what God has given you. Amen? Amen. Cool. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for... Just thank you. Just thank you. No words can really just say thank you. It's not an, it's thank you for creating us. Thank you for building us. And thank you for ensuring to us, look, we're not a, just a line of robots that you know us all personally and intimately and individually you know our flaws. You know everything of us. You can count the hairs on our head. Lord, we ask, please, that you give us the wisdom and the courage to live for you, to honor you with all that we have, that we may grow in your words and your wisdom, that your thoughts and your word is embedded in our hearts and our mind, that we are a new person. How wonderful you are and how wonderful you've made us. Thank you, Lord, for knowing us. And thank you, Lord, for always being there the good times, the bad times. You are so good, Father. All those in agreement say amen. Amen. amen.